volatility induced by increasing inflation, which is increasing interest rates. Is it justified? That is the question. Well, Jean-Pierre, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you in our studio. How are you? Thank you. Very fine. And it's always a pleasure to be back with you here uh, to uh, share new ideas. Absolutely. We've got a, a really fun interview today talking about a, a variety of different topics related to volatility, especially with how the markets have been recently. They've been, well, <laughs> all over the place. Um, how have you read into this? What's your take on the volatility that we've seen? Well, the volatility originally, the, the way they was presented by most medias was to say, well, there's an uncertainty as far as what uh, inflation is concerned in the United States. Yeah. And uh, that uh, interest rates might uh, raise sharp, uh, faster, rise faster than expected. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gave some uncertainty on the market. The question is, and uh, what we have to ask ourselves, well, how negative is inflation as long as it is reasonably contained? Yeah. And uh, if we look at the fact that the European Union, I mean the European Central Bank, has a tremendous problem with being unable to increase uh, its inflation rates, yeah. uh, we observe the United States who is basically successful at it. Um, to me, it is rather a good news because inflation will uh, generate increase in salaries, which will again increase uh, consumer spendings and uh, will be in a positive way if it is directed correctly, a uh, better outlook for the future economy, not in the immediate future, but within the next two or three days, uh, three years, sorry. So, <clears throat> Uh, volatility induced by increasing inflation, which is increasing interest rates, is it justified? That is the question. There might be some other element behind that uh, volatility, yeah. uh, which is the question, how much higher can the market go? And uh, if we have increase in interest rates, how much is the, the bond market going to uh, be uh, affected by it and the investors with uh, falling prices of bonds, uh, which should induce some volatility on these markets too. So uh, it is interesting. I think we have a very interesting beginning of the year. Uh, this year will be significantly less quiet than 2018. And uh, we look to stronger volatility in the market, which will give a chance to investors to reposition themselves and uh, ultimately uh, great investment opportunities mm -hmm. uh, that can appear thanks to that volatility. Mm. We can't talk about volatility without having a, a little look at the, the mayhem, I should say, the, the back end of last year and coming into this year that is the world of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. Um, What's your, what's your current thoughts on this? There, there was a massive drop off. It's now starting to recover slightly. Uh, what are your thoughts on the, this market as a whole? Well, I think uh, cryptocurrencies are uh, fulfilling uh, some goal because uh, if they were useless, as a matter of fact, they would never reappear. They would have never appeared and they yeah. would have never developed. Mm -hmm. Um, what we observe too is that central banks now, after having tried to say that cryptocurrencies are worthless, are thinking about introducing their own cryptocurrency, which is interesting because what, what really is, uh, is separating a cryptocurrency yeah. from a real currency. Now, if you look at the way it is used, is that on the cryptocurrency, a government who controls its inflation through increase and decrease of interest rates mm -hmm. has no potential to use these tools. The currency is free, but it's also free of interest rates because 
we haven't seen any cryptocurrency right now that is paying interest. And that is a significant difference, neither positive or negative, I yeah. would say. And this is a significant uh, difference. Now, are there going to be cryptocurrencies that do have an interest rate component um, that could be interested? But I question myself when I hear central banks saying they want to introduce their own crypto, mm. which will not allow them to help the economy with the adjustments of interest rates yeah. in times of high inflation or deflation. Uh, how are they going to uh, solve that problem? Uh, I do not quite understand it yet, but yeah. I'm sure there's people very intelligent who know already how it will potentially work. Mm -hmm. So w with that being said, a, a, a kind of interesting way that might help uh, people understand that this market a lot, a lot more. How would you sort of, what, what, what would you say is the difference between say the Euro and then Bitcoin? What are the sort of key differences? Well, the, I think it's important to separate the Euro from the US dollar. Yeah because the US dollar is a sovereign currency. Mm -hmm. The euro is not a sovereign currency. And therefore we can ask ourselves, well, a Bitcoin is not a sovereign currency either. Uh, is a Bitcoin related to a central bank going to become a sovereign currency? That is another question. Yeah. But the euro in itself is based on uh, trust people put into uh, the, the euro. Mm -hmm. uh, a Bitcoin, a crypto is the same way. It's the trust that people have in the currency that they can recoup the money they had in a different way, be it in another currency or in gold or in uh, merchandise. Yeah. So what you have and what is determining in that is what is the confidence the public has. Now what we see the public has always considered or is treating the euro like a sovereign currency, also it is not. Mm -hmm. I mean the guarantee of the euros, the 10 billion euro of capital of the European Central Bank. Yeah. There's not much more behind. And uh, what is the crypto? An algorithm? and the money the people have put in to buy that cryptocurrency. Um, so basically when you look at both, they're very close. And uh, my question is, of course, uh, how long will the euro survive? And uh, how about not just turning the euro into a simple crypto, which uh, could solve the problem uh, of, uh, uh, of the, the euro and make it a, a currency that is based right now. Either it's going to survive or it's going to disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the question is, you know, how, how can we differentiate? And why shouldn't people buy euro and not bitcoins? I mean, it's uh, or other cryptos that will develop yeah. over the years. And, uh, you know, all the experiences that are made now with them are very interesting because let's not forget that we are at the end of a financial uh, system. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is one thing we have to be aware of is that the next financial system to be handling the financial world will not politically accept that one currency has overbearing power over a significant amount of all the other currencies uh, because politically speaking the power contained in that controlling the world financial system will not be accepted by the new power in this world. Mm -hmm. Jean-Pierre, thank you so much. You've, you've really given me a lot to think about there. It has fascinating <laughs> insight and a really uh, interesting way to look at everything. Thank so uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you like this interview and would like to find out more, be sure to head over to dugascopy.tv.